In this video, I'm going to show you detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the battery on the Google Pixel 6. As you can see, this one's already helped us out by swelling up and pushing the screen off on this side. But what we want to do is, first of all, remove that screen. So we're going to place it on the hot plate, face down for about 5 or 10 minutes. And that's going to heat up the adhesive on the edges and make it nice and soft. I've got mine set to 85 degrees C. You can use a heat gun or hairdryer to achieve the same effect. And after about five minutes on here, it's going to be really nice and warm to the touch and you should be able to remove the screen. Once it's hot, you're going to apply a suction cup to the bottom of the screen just here. And then I'm going to run a bead of isopropyl alcohol along this bottom edge. That's going to soften the adhesive a little bit more and just make it a little bit easier to remove it. Obviously, this one's already pushing up like that, so it's pretty easy for me to remove. If your screen isn't already pushing up, you're going to lift up with the suction cup like that. And you want to lift it enough so that you can get one of these plastic guitar picks in the gap and begin separating it. What you might find is that the plastic bezel and the screen separate, but you need to take off the plastic bezel as well as the screen on these ones. Remove the screen by running the guitar pick along this edge and it's sort of cutting through the adhesive, making it easy to lift away. Once we've got all the way around it, then the phone opens up, like opening the front cover of a book. Let's take this over to the workbench to disassemble it further. What you don't want to do is let this screen flop all the way down, so I leave the suction cup attached to it so that it can prop it up behind it and just hold it open for me while we remove this screw. If you don't have that suction cup, just use a heavy weighted object like a mug to achieve the same effect. Then we're gonna look at how swollen this is. That is mad. I've never seen one that bad. Once we're into the device, we can use a T2 Torx bit screwdriver to remove this single screw. With that removed, we have to remove this little metal shield just here. I always use tweezers for this bit because you need to sort of get under there and it's got a little latch on it like that that you need to pop off. I always bend it back as well before you put it down. Just make sure that that's sort of sitting flat, just like that. Otherwise it'll stick up and could damage the screen. Make sure that the phone's off before you do this because we're gonna detach the screen now. And the easiest way to do that is just to put your thumb on the flex cable and pull up on the screen and it'll come away very, very easily. Now, because this is such a spicy pillow, I'm gonna be very careful when removing this like carbon sheet that's on there. So I'm gonna use a plastic tool to do that. So I'm going to fold that back there, do the same up on this bit here, just peeling off this like heat tape or anti-heat tape. I'm not sure which, which, what it exactly does. If somebody knows, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, we're just going to peel those back so that we've got access to the battery. Next, we need to remove the metal shield that's holding down the motherboard. So it's all these screws along here. They're all those T2 Torx driver bits. So just go ahead and remove it from here. I think they're all the same size, although I will tell you if there are any that's different. We're just gonna work through on the top right, work our way leftwards, and then we'll work down this left-hand edge of the phone, removing all the screws. Don't forget, if you like repair content just like this, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. And if you're having a go at this repair yourself, I'd love to know how you get on in the comments below. I will try to find a minute to reply to some of your comments because I know that I can be a bit poor at replying, so I do apologize. That's as far as you have to go down this side because you can now get the plastic pick just under here and then this metal shield will lift up, revealing our battery cover just here. To disconnect that, use a plastic spudger. Avoid metal tools around all connectors, really. And then these uh, these Google Pixel batteries have this strange little flap thing that you're meant to sort of cut through the adhesive with underneath. I can never get it to work very well, to be honest. But it's like a... Similar to how I removed the batteries for the um, iPads, I suppose. But what I always end up doing is just uh, ignoring them and prying them out, to be honest. I'll, uh, I'll drop some alcohol underneath the battery. The phone's still warm, to be honest, so I'm not too worried about 
and not being soft enough. A great idea to have this little plastic tool built in, but in reality, they don't work very well. So let's get that out of the way. And I'm just gonna pop the plastic guitar pick underneath this far edge and just very, very carefully pry underneath it until it pops out. And it should come out pretty easily with a little bit of alcohol and heat. You might find that it leaves behind some adhesive. If it does, just get a number 17 exacto blade and remove any left behind. And then I'm also gonna just get a little dab of acetone on a clean room wipe. And I'm just gonna clean it up as well to get as much of that adhesive off as possible. I hate putting adhesive on top of adhesive. The job's worth doing, it's worth doing right, isn't it? So that's nice and clean now. The part that I'll be using for the repair is a genuine Google Pixel battery and it comes with the adhesive already applied as well as that little weird tool that I was talking about before. <laughs> we'll put it back in in case somebody else has a go at this and knows how to use it better than me. But reinstallation is a very, very simple case of always connect it up first. The reason that I do that is because no matter how misaligned you put the battery now, you know that it'll always work and fit and connect. Whereas if you put the battery in first and it's not aligned very well, you'll struggle to get that cable in. Whereas that is very easy to put in. This has got some bits of masking tape that we need to remove here and here. I'll try and put a link in the description below for where I bought the genuine battery. Honestly, if you can get hold of them, just buy them for the price of a genuine part versus an aftermarket part it might be five or ten pounds and for the money that you've saved installing the battery yourself then you might as well not cheap out on the part let me tell you then right now anyway let's move back on with reassembling the phone and we're going to pop the shield back on top and i thought i was right when we were taking it apart they are all the same size screw that go back in here. There's only the single screw for the screen that is shorter. So just go ahead and reinstall all the screws that we took out. That one was the screw for the screen. So there's these two up here. Try and stick this stuff back down onto the battery the best you can. It's got to be there for a reason. If somebody knows, let me know in the comments. But we've just got four more screws to get in up this top edge here. And that's all secured down now. Get this bit of tape back on there. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Next, we need to remove all the old adhesive. This can be awful on these ones. If you've got one of these number four A Exacto blades, then I would highly recommend using that. Peel off or scrape off all of the adhesive that's left behind. Take a good minute to make sure that it's nice and clean. The way that this is held down is with adhesive tape. I do not recommend using glues to reseal the screen back onto the phone. Now, in this instance, I wasn't able to get a replacement official seal. So the way that I'm gonna do it is the same way that I do iPads. And this is a tried and tested method that I've used for a long time to resecure screens like this that we can't get seals for. It might be a little bit unorthodox. It might be against your morals to do it this way. But I personally think this is the best seal that you can get without using glues. Because glues just don't, I don't know, they just end up everywhere. It's messy. It takes a long time to cure. Whereas this cures instantly. And it does as good a job as any other phone adhesives that I've used in the past. So it's a bit of a cut and stick lesson. You're gonna cut the tesser tape to fit around all the four edges, cutting around any obstacles in the way, such as the ear speaker. And this will give the, the phone, although albeit not a factory seal, it's gonna be the best seal that I can deliver in my shop when I don't have a factory seal available. But yeah, like I say, I'm open to criticism on this, but I personally think it's a very, very good way of securing these screens into place. Just remember to not 
cut into the sorry not leave the air speaker all clogged up with adhesive because that's not good cut around it and then remove that bit of adhesive i think the scalpel will be my friend for this bit so to cut these leftover bits we're going to use a brand new single-sided razor blade and we're just going to start like just shaving it to fit and then it, it's going to at least give that perfect sort of fit on there and then go back and catch the rest just be careful these do have a plastic bezel so with a sharp blade it can be easy to cut into it but if you run it fine along the edge you'll not struggle got a bit snagged up there but that's all good same along this opposite edge obviously be careful because you've got the flex cable there so took that away before you start chopping into it because you don't want to cut that it's going to cost you a lot of money if you do but yeah just run that through go around the corners and just cut it to fit just be careful when using razor blades around your wrists and finally of course we've got this bottom area i'll show you how to tidy the edges up in a second as well i really don't like b7000 glues and that's that's what other people use for this so this is why i do it this way I've got a vendetta against b7000 right if you find that it's not perfect on one of the edges just grab something like a uh, a nail file and just give it a little rub and it's just going to smooth off that adhesive on the edge any rough bits it'll just tidy it up a little bit and that's your craft lesson done for today so all that we're going to do now is reattach the screen to the chassis make sure that it lines up before you start putting pressure on they're awkward as hell because they've like dipped into this into this bit of metal shield but once you've got it sat on right and you think it's in just run over it with your plastic pick sorry plastic spudger to make sure that it's sat down right and then you can go ahead and get that awkward little shield in place now so that sits in like that once it's on you can push it down and it should clip into place and then secure it down with that single t2 screw brush out the inside of the phone make sure that it's nice and clean and then very carefully peel back the adhesive strips that you've installed onto the back of the screen if you manage to buy a genuine seal you don't have to worry about this because you'd installed it onto the chassis but i find that if you if you don't have the seal and you do it this way it's better on the screen because you can cut it to fit it a little bit easier just get this final edge and then I always fold it over and line it up on that corner before I peel off this last bit just because I don't want to pull it and snag the screen cable. I'm always very careful of those screen cables. But with that done, we can squeeze down the edges, make sure that it clips in and it sits nicely. And then of course you're going to boot the phone. And this battery should come with about 50% plus battery health, battery life, sorry. There's no screws to re-secure. That is just about job done. Make sure that the phone boots all the way and make sure that it boots without a cable plugged in as well. That will determine whether the battery is working or not. Sometimes you might find that it starts booting on a cable, but it doesn't boot without. That means that there's probably a problem and you will have to go back a few steps and check what's gone wrong there. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.